Hold on, I seem to have hot glued some stuff to my desk. Oh dear. <laughs> It'll be okay. All right, so. <laughs> oh no, don't, okay. <gasps> Slight video travels. Okay, so I wanted to wait and do this one on a throwback Thursday because it's got a really cool couple of things in here. Uh, I have a couple of pairs of cat ears and believe it or not, they actually both come from designer Anouk Viprecht, who is a famous, internationally amazing uh, tech fashion designer. Uh, these ones are from the Cat Ear LED Ears tutorial, which I'll link in the description to this video. And these ones are just made of connects, but they're really cool, or whatever Lego Technic. Uh, but <laughs> they're both... This one I printed from her design, and this one she gave me at Maker Faire New York a couple years ago, and how could I get rid of them? Because they're so perfect! Anyway, the thing with these is that they aren't yet glowy. They don't light up in any way. Uh, and so I thought I'd make a couple of these SMD challenge boards, which I've gotten from uh, Drew Fistini over you know, the time that I've known him. Uh, and so I happen to have two of them, they're the same thing, and so I figured that they would make excellent little blinkies to put in the ears. It would be perfect. The thing about these, though, is that it's a challenge for a reason. Like, this is gonna be a huge pain, and I'm gonna regret ever living. Also, my soldering iron does not have a fine tip. So we're gonna see how this goes, because it's Monday and I need something cool to wear at Arm Tech Con this week. Alright? Alright. So, in honor of Halloween, I wish this were a throwback Thursday, because then I could, like, just, you know, say that it was because of the LED ears or whatever, but it's, it's, it's October, that counts. All right, so I'm gonna try doing one by hand, and then if that fails, um, I'm gonna try, I have my surface mount soldering stuff here. I do wish I had a thinner soldering iron tip. That would be the chief upgrade to my life right now. <laughs> but we're gonna see how this goes, as I said. All right, so here's the PCB. Let me zoom in on this a little for you. Do, do, do. And by zoom, I mean focus. I always say the wrong thing there. Yeah, so you start at 1206, which is a pretty friendly uh, size here. You've got your little uh, programming uh, pinout here. Then you have a spot for your at time 8085. So yeah, you start at 1206, then you go down to 0805. Then you go down to uh, 0603, 0402, and finally 0201. Uh, and over here are resistors, and over here are um, LEDs, and then you've got a little capacitor as well, and then you put your coin cell battery holder on the other side. Go to makersbox.us if you would like your own. Uh, all right, <laughs> this is gonna be really unpleasant. So we're gonna start, um, of course, at the top with the, ooh, hey, <laughs> stay there with the uh, least challenging one, and then move our way down. And then I'm gonna do the chip and the capacitor and the uh, coin cell battery holder if everything works out okay. All right, here are my components. They're all taped down to this card because that's the only way you can not lose them in the kit. We've got our battery, we've got our coin cell holder. Um, I think there's, a, uh, no, in the other one, there's like a little pin back as well, but we don't need that because we're just gonna be attaching it inside of our um, our ears somehow. All right, <laughs> prepare for pain. <laughs> I'm gonna really regret this. It's gonna be so embarrassing. I mean, that's what I get for having like a big fat soldering iron tip and not bothering to order nice ones. Okay, first I'm gonna clean it off because I think that's gonna make my life easiest is to like start off with something super nice and clean. All right. Oh boy. Okay. Oh. I gotta pull these out of their thingies, huh? And I've got my tweezers, and I've even got a loop here so that I can look super cyborgy while I do it and maybe even help me uh, do some soldering here. Doesn't that look great and super borgy? It's so good. Uh, yeah, it might even help. Whoa! I mean, just being in style helps, honestly. Um, this is really weird and inconvenient, but it does have a cool light on it. Whoa! <laughs> Cool. We'll come to that later if we need it. All right. Um, I'm also going to be wrestling with the challenge of having a camera right here in front of my face. You can't see this, but it's like right there. So these are my extra <laughs> little challenges. 
I'm, I'm making a lot of excuses here, basically, is what's happening, uh, so that I can be criticized later on. Uh, a lot of people do, like, timing challenges with these, where, like, you'll try and complete it faster than other people, but it's just me here, so whatever. Uh, if people want to, they can, like, time the video later on. I don't know when, when the judging is supposed to start. This is not... <laughs> Ah, this, uh, okay, so the 1206 ones, let's do those first. Wait, why are there two? Oh, here's a capacitor, okay. And then we've got two of the resistors? Is that just in case I lose one? I think that's in case I lose one. Um, because there's two of each of these sets of resistors. Okay, that's nice. <laughs> I take it, having done this in person, they've probably dealt with a bunch of these issues before. Oh, one thing I need to figure out is which way does it go? Okay, a little arrow points that way on the diode. That means that I need to um, can we get this any better situated here. That I need to point the ground side of the diode that away. This is really not working super great. Let's get you off of there. Okay, cool. Cool. Yeah, you see that little arrow there? That means that's the way that the diode has to go. Uh, on the actual LED itself, that may be depicted by a little green stripe or dot or something. Uh, <laughs> however, it is not. That is... Oh, yeah, it is. It's very subtle. Okay. Um, so I'm going to tin this first. In fact, I wish I had a, some flux with me. I would just, like, glob it all over there. And I don't think this thing actually wants to have anything else tinned in the in the little zeros. I think they're just decorative. Okay, here we go. Oh boy, some big tufts of solder here. That is not what I want. I want them to be relatively flat so that I can put the component down. Um, so I'm just going to grab some of that and use it to tin the other pads, actually. Oh boy, this is going to be special. Oh no. <laughs> Go on there. Hey. Do the thing. Put it on the pads. Hmm. Okay. I'm going to actually turn down the heat on this iron because I think that will also help me a little bit. Oh wow. Oh wow. Those are some small components. Don't want to actually bridge anything. So let's undo that. Okay, I think that's a pretty good thing to be starting off with. <laughs> I'm gonna regret this so much. Oh, okay. So, first component. Ooh, okay. Gotta work out my little system with the camera here. Makes it a little bit awkward. Oh no, we're bridging a thing. Stop. Stop. <laughs> it's gonna be... Well, whatever. It'll be inside of a little ear thing no one's gonna see. Oh boy. Why are you being all spiky? Get out of there. Okay, that's a huge mess already. Fantastic! <laughs> Wait, did I just put the diode on the- no, okay. Huh. The diode is on the diode thing, the resistor will go on the resistor thing, we'll all be happy. Um, I guess I might as well do the capacitor now because who knows what will happen in a bit. And I could lose it. I'm definitely, I think, gonna do the other one with the surface mount technique. And maybe that'll be a video tomorrow. We shall see. Let's get this little guy in place. And my soldering iron is fairly clean. So I'm just gonna, oh, this, this could go better. Famous last words. Also making sure that I don't solder too, oh, to the camera. Yeah, hmm, so even getting the iron in between those components is a little bit of a challenge. This one is even easiest because, like, A, it's the biggest, but also B, it's right on the edge. So I'm not going to disturb anything else while I'm soldering these. Hmm. Hmm. 
Let's just try and like glamour that up a little bit more, huh? Oh boy. Okay, that's, you know, marginally better. All right, next set. We're doing it. Uh, oh yeah, I was gonna do the capacitor now, wasn't I? Um, do I care? Yeah, well, I haven't tinned it yet, so we'll just hold that in reserve. Okay, next up is 0805. I need some, like, serious battle music here. I'm not feeling inspired. What is y'all's favorite battle music? Because, um, I actually, I've never played this game Air Mech, but I really love its soundtrack for, like, an uplifting, sort of encouraging techno soundtrack. Uh, totally recommend that for if you have hacks that you're doing. So this one has a teeny tiny little green arrow pointing off to the left side as I look at it here. So I'm going to flip it over and place it that way. Oh boy. You know, I thought it would be best to start with the easiest. Uh -oh. and go up in difficulty, but I'm wondering if I'm making it harder on myself that way. Add a tiny little bit more solder. There we go. Making sure that's actually connected. Seems to be. We'll find out when we light this up, you know, whether everything's actually connected or not. Another tweezing here. Open. I'm just trying to tweeze the, the little tape of the resistor open. There we go. Oh yeah, I should keep these actually in order. So here are the first set of resistors and capacitor. All right. <laughs> okay, cool. This says 331 on it, which basically reads the same way that you read um, resistor color codes. So the first two numbers are actually significant figures, uh, a three and a three. Um, and then the one afterwards is, uh, you know, the power of 10 you multiply, AKA how many zeros you add onto the end. So it's a 330 ohm resistor. Uh, I'm not going to say anything about that wasn't so bad, except I just did, so... <laughs> oh no, where did my little resistor go? Come back. Ah! Alright, there's our resistor. It's already out. Making a run for it, but we caught it. Um, yeah, I can definitely see why they give you extra. If we lose a diode, though, we're on our own. Ah! I feel like, you know, if I were actually timing this, then I would lose a lot of time on just getting the packaging open. So that's an element of strategy you may want to consider if you find yourself in a soldering race. Oh, no, okay, good. I thought it was gonna get stuck to the... Uh, oh, <laughs> my tweezers are apparently magnetic. Ooh, I can't actually tell which way this is going. It doesn't have any green indicators. It has one slightly longer pad. That is not very helpful. Hmm. Okay, <laughs> what I could do... Hmm, do I have my charm wear stuff here? I think I do. Where's it gone? Here we are. It wants to have a resistor on it. No, I don't have... Oh, curses. Ah! Hmm. Well, how could I build a tester for this? That wouldn't be a huge pain in the butt. Mm. Maybe I'll just stick it on and if it goes on the wrong... That's a terrible idea. Okay. This is gonna take a little bit of time, but it's gonna be worth it, I think. I'm going to make a little LED tester. And that'll help me make sure that I don't have to redo this. So I've taken a male to male jumper wire and cut it in half. And now I'm going to strip the ends. And I do have a CR2032 battery holder in here. 
It doesn't have any... Oh, I could just put a resistor in line with the jumper wire. Ha! Cool. I do, however, have... Yeah, here we go. Cool. Um, we're gonna grab a 330 ohm resistor out of our big resistor book. How about just a 220? Because, well, no, it's so small, it could be really sensitive. We have 330 here, okay. This binder has um, a bunch of business card holders in it where I've put the resistors from this pack that I bought and their tapes are labeled. Okay, so um, I'm gonna tin this, making sure not to lose my little components in the meantime. Uh, tin these, oh, there we go. And I've also got my little battery holder here. I'm gonna tin that. And I've got my resistor, and I'm going to cut off its legs. So brutal. And tin that as well. Put it on the positive side. actually come in really handy for the future whenever I'm testing LEDs and stuff. I'm just going to use the same battery that they provide us in the kit. Okay. Super quick and dirty LED tester. Got one here. La la la. All right, we'll stick the battery in there. Now figure out which way this thing is oriented. Actually, I'm gonna make sure, yeah! Okay, so that other little resistor is also 330 ohms, so I guess it's just the same circuit for each of them, huh? Uh, all right, so my side with the resistor is the positive side. <laughs> this is so ridiculous, Re resistulous. Uh, I'm gonna put that on the bigger side of the LED, the side with the bigger lead, and see what happens. <sighs> I'm so nervous. Nothing. Okay, try it the other way. Ah, oh, it lights up. Okay. <laughs> That's so adorable. I don't know if you could see that on the screen. Yeah, you could. Isn't that great? Oh my goodness. Okay, cool. You could. <laughs> okay. Ah. Uh, all right, so the right side is the positive and the left side is the negative. Okay, let's go. Ah, no, no, it's getting flipped around. I'm gonna lose my, my mental spot. Okay, ah. <laughs> this is great. Okay, it's definitely very tombstone there. But I think that's because the other side is kind of spiky. Yeah, I did not do the greatest job of like tinning this, but whatever. I don't even care. It's gonna be in a little enclosure, so whatever. Do the thing. I'm just gonna connect it like that. It's so bad. <laughs> oh, I'm not getting graded on style, so who cares? You probably care. Someone is definitely gonna be like, I care. And you know what? You're right. You should have aesthetic standards, but right now I don't, so. Ah! Get on. Get on there. The other nice thing about resistors, it doesn't matter even if they're upside down. <laughs> okay. Ah! Still able to do this with the naked eye, which is very nice. Ah! 
Although that makes me think of like soldering with your eyes, which sounds not pleasant at all. Let me actually take a look at this with the loop and see if I can like spot anything out of place. That looks pretty good. Um, from the other side, looks not great. There's definitely a little bit of it that is not connected. And I've got all these little terrible spikes, but I'm blaming that on my giant soldering iron, so what else? Okay, next up is the 0402. They seem to want you to do the at tiny after that, so sure, why not? But actually, I think I'm just gonna barrel through because I don't wanna stop once I've got my groove going. All right, we're gonna have to test this one again. I don't know how I'm gonna test the last one. It's gonna be a challenge. Oh, so tiny. Oh wait, but you know what? If I if it maintains, so it seems like this. Oh yeah, one side has a little sort of arrow kind of etched into it. Let's test this with our little tester again. If my hypothesis is correct, then it'll light up. Yes, good. Okay, cool. <laughs> this is so cool. This is a green LED. It just lit up real tiny. Don't drop it, Alex. Don't drop it. Oh boy. Hands are definitely st Oh, did I flip it around? No biggie. Um, yeah, still in the same orientation. <laughs> wow. Shaky hands become a big issue at this point. My hands aren't even that shaky, it's just like doing this teeny tiny stuff and it sticks to the soldering iron, no! I need to use some like epoxy to hold it in place or something while I solder it. Mm. Flip around, oh no. Turn around. <gasps> Oh no, you flipped over the wrong way. There we go, okay, okay, okay. This is gonna be it, this is gonna be our, this is our time. I believe in us. Oh no. The main thing is that I can't tell when it has been on the surface which way it's facing anymore. Yeah, I was about to put that on backwards this time. What if I first melt the solder and then just sort of stick it down? <gasps> Where did it go? Oh no! Hmm. Did it stick to my soldering iron? No. Oh no! My tweezing skills seem to be wanting. <sighs> oh no! I think I've lost it. Oh no! <laughs> what do I do? Um, well. Hmm. Oh, there it is! Found it. Tiny little shiny thing. Oh my goodness. Okay, I am actually gonna see about putting some, cause I don't care about cheating. So maybe some little like super glue or something will help here. Um, <sighs> totally cheating. It's not cheating. This is a legitimate method. I haven't actually watched anyone else's things to learn their tips and tricks, so this is all just, you know, first try. Okay, let's see. It needs to be flipped over and around. Oh no, it's gonna get stuck to the tweezers, isn't it? I bet you it is. Everything's gonna go wrong here. This is the moment when everything goes wrong. Aren't you glad you're here for it? <gasps> oh no, I think it's covered all the solder. 
just gonna hit that and pretend like my finger is not now covered with glue. <laughs> uh, okay, the little LED has been flipped over. I need to flip it that way, okay. Mm. I don't know if this will even stick anymore. Probably just gonna get, yeah, glue all over my tweezers. Yep, yep, that's exactly what's happening. It is not sticking because it's a non-porous surface. Uh, hmm, it does seem to have gotten a little more viscous, which is nice. However, the wrong side is touching that. Hmm. A decent idea, but flawed in execution. Um, if I put this on here sideways, and kind of roll it onto there. <laughs> hmm. Well. That's sort of in place. Oh, yikes. This is going to be a fun night, huh? Do the thing. Go on the place. Go to there. Mm. I think that happened in the correct way. Please? No. Huh. Is it backwards? No, I think it's just either not connected or... Okay, let's poke at it some more. Now at least it's stable, so I can work on the actual electrical connections. I might have killed the LED actually with the heat. That's right, I meant to turn it down. Ooh, dear. Let's try my mad scientist loop again. I love this thing. This might be my new best friend. How do I make it not uncomfortable? Close enough. Whoa. Oh, but I can't get past the camera. Whoa. Everything's shiny. Oh, it's just like off to the side. Hmm. That should ideally work. Let's see what... Ah. <laughs> hmm. Did you see that? It worked. Cool. All right. So that's exciting. Um, resistor time. <laughs> I'm going to cry before this is over. Oh, I've opened up both of them. So I'm going to have to keep track of that other resistor then, huh? Okay, this one, fortunately, again, does not matter if it's... Like, it's, it's non-polar, it can be upside down, backwards, everything is fine. <sighs> Alright. Let go. Just gonna poke it around a bit with the end here. Tip of my tweezers. On the tip of my tweezers. Okay. <sighs> All right. This is again one going to want to stick to the soldering iron. So what can I do about that? I don't know. We'll just see what happens. Yep, sticking, sticking. Go over there. What are you doing? Why are you sticking to the other thing? That doesn't make any sense. Ah! 
Come back. Not done with you yet. Where did it go? <laughs> well, I've got another one. Cool. That feels like nothing on my finger. And again, I've lost it. It was there, and then it wasn't. That's so weird. Is it like lodged in my fingerprint somewhere? This is such a weird and interesting experience. Like, I've never lost anything in this way before. <laughs> Where it's just too tiny to detect. In fact, I feel like I'm having a flashback to a dream right now. Um, let's look with my little tiny loop. It's for looking at small things, so maybe I can find something this way. Oh, this is so weird. Wait, I'm just looking with my regular eyes while I hold the loop here. Hmm. It must be. There's two of them. Maybe they're, oh, they're on the surface of it. Found one. <laughs> Here it is. Come back to the place where you belong. Oh, I can tell already the other one's gonna be impossible. Mm. I have such a giant soldering iron for this. I wonder if the other one is actually like stuck to the soldering iron somehow. Oh no! Oh no! Oh, it's still there. Okay, good. Oh, and I found the other resistor. Cool. Mm. Oh boy. Just I just need one side of it to attach here. Go on there. Ugh. So close. <gasps> yes. Okay. One more tiny little adjustment to connect the other side. I think that's done it. <laughs> mm, I guess we'll find out in a bit, huh? If that connection isn't made, then the circuit won't be closed. All right, oh, final stretch here. This is the most difficult soldering thing I've ever had to do. Definitely doing the other one with um, flux and a heat gun. But uh, let's try. <laughs> Come back. Let's take a really close up look at it for a second. You can see how egregious my job is so far. Oh, so bad. Totally egregious. It's fine though. I'm okay with it. All right. Smallest set, 0201. If I lose these ones, I am totally sunk, so. At this point, I think that like, static electricity comes into play. Wait, where did it go? It was in the little container, and then it wasn't. Oh, here it is. I found it. <laughs> okay, time for the loop. Mm, my hair is getting in the way. 
which way does this go? There are no markings on it to tell you which way it goes. This is the worst thing. Oh, and the tinning isn't on the edges, it's only on the bottom. Oh, how cruel. I don't know how I can solder this with a soldering iron then. Because the contacts don't extend to the edges. So that basically means that I can't do it that way. Unless I try to like heat up the solder and then immediately plonk down the component and just hope then it makes a connection. Hmm. Also, even with the loop, I can't tell which side is which, so I'm gonna have to test it with my tester. Tester device. Oh, this is not working. All right, there we go. I got a little blue flash, okay. <laughs> now I know which side is which, okay. Is that glaring into your eyes? No, okay, cool. <laughs> I have figured out which side is which on the LED, okay. Now let's see, oh that kind of messes up my vision otherwise, now that my one eye is acclimated to, <gasps> oh no, it's sticking to the tweezers, okay. <sighs> All right. I need more precise tweezers. I think I have, oh no! <laughs> I think I have some in my uh, surface mount here. Okay. Okay. Yeah, some sharper tweezers. Okay. This is not going to work, but I'm gonna try it anyway. I'm gonna try and just, <laughs> this is ridiculous, it's not gonna work. Hmm. Try it anyway, okay. Worst possibility is it just doesn't work. I need a loop to place this correctly. I feel really cyberpunk right now. Okay, I'm gonna be a jerk and take this off the screen for a sec because I need to have it like right up in my face. Ooh, but then it'll fall off the table. Oh no. Oh, I might have lost the other resistor as well. Or both of them. Oh no. Wait, no, they're still in the thingy, I think. Okay. Okay. Depth perception is really difficult with, with this. No, yeah, it won't stay warm long enough. If I had a smaller soldering iron, I could even get around this by maybe yes. putting on some jewelry. Oh no, I've lost which side is which. <laughs> This might be simply impossible for me at my uh, current soldering iron tip size. But if so, uh, you know what I think I'll do is I'll come back tomorrow with a different tip size. Oh, but for now, we can attach the other things and see if, uh, <laughs> see if what I've done so far is valid. That'll give us a nice little way to end the day. All right. Back to the regular size tweezers, back to the now giant seeming capacitor, tennis pads.
the news as well. The lovely thing about solder mask is that it makes all of this so much easier than if I were trying to do this on a bare PCB. Ah! <laughs> Group force it. Beautiful. Okay. Uh, since I've turned down my soldering iron temperature, I'm pretty okay with uh, just direct soldering this. Normally, with a chip, I would want to put a uh, socket on and use a. Uh, and solder that so I didn't have to solder the chip. But although with this kind of low profile. A small footprint package, uh, imagine a dot to the dot. That's not really possible, it would have to be through mold. So, I'm fine with this. Uh, and I'm feeling cocky about this right now, so I'm just gonna hold it in place with my finger while I tap down one of the pins. So now that one pin is in place, it's not super well soldered, but it'll hold everything else in place while I solder them. If I had a chisel tip right now, this would be nicer, but they don't, so we're doing this. Get some nice smooth little curves on there. Try and give you a break from the like, hideous job of the uh, other ones so far. I have no shame about it, like I'm using the wrong tool for the job, but uh, you know, it's nice to see something pretty at the end of the day. Okay. Now I just need to put on the uh, little, oh boy, battery holder. Where have you gone? Here you are. I'm going to tin a little bit in the center so that uh, there's a little bit of, like, you're able to make good contact with the battery. I'm trying to make that kind of flat though. Um, tin these sides. So the pendant hole, oh, I'm not showing you this. The pendant hole is at the top, and so I want to have the battery coming out this way. Let's put it back in the holder. I'm definitely gonna hold this with the tweezers because it'll get really hot. Stay in place. <laughs> These things can be kind of annoying to place. It kind of helps actually if I do it this way. <laughs> no, you're just being uncooperative. Gotta really heat up the metal just to make sure that it actually attaches. That should be pretty good. Nope. Ah. There we go.
see what happens when we plug this in. <laughs> um, hmm. I actually have another 2032 that I could just stick in. I'm not sure if that disables the entire circuit from going, if not all of it is on there, or if some of them will go. Oh, hey! They are independent. Ooh. Ooh. We've got some shaky connections here. <laughs> okay, so the second size, um, the D1, that is definitely having some problems. And then I have a look at it with the loop to see uh, whether that's the resistor or the diode or what. But I think I'm just going to have to come back with my other soldering iron tip again tomorrow. Yeah, kind of hard to tell. I'll just try and like get those a little better attached tomorrow. Actually, I think I know which one it is. <laughs> Let's try and not like break it while it's just, just by like dropping it on the floor. That would be pretty bad. I shouldn't solder on this while it's plugged in, but I'm gonna do it. My guess is that either one of the solder connections is not strong, or the LED is in there backwards. <laughs> It does have a green marking though, but sometimes the green marking is backwards. Hmm. Well, I have strengthened all the connectors and it seems to still not want to go. So my guess is that the LED is backwards. Ah, oh, I can't leave good enough alone. I have to pull that off. I'll go out with, okay, I'm going to come back tomorrow, I'm going to hit that with some desoldering grade with a really nice thin tip, and uh, I'm going to get it working. And then we'll also finish the last one, and then we'll do the other one with like a, um, a surface mount soldering rig, and it will be much less painful. But yeah, <laughs> I regret nothing, this has been glorious. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow. Have an awesome rest of your Monday, uh, and we'll see you soon. Uh, yeah, remember to stay tuned this Wednesday and Thursday because we're going to be at Arm Tech Con. If you're at the con, come to the Hackster.io booth. It's going to be fantastic. We have all kinds of cool stuff there. Uh, but otherwise, just stay tuned and we'll have some sweet new interviews with Arm innovators, uh, some of whom you've met before and some of whom are new and awesome, including one from Laura Kasovic, the founder of um, Metaware. And as it turns out, it's almost three years to the day since I interviewed her last. Uh, so this will be quite the throwback this Thursday. Uh, I'm stoked to see you there. All right, have an awesome night.